Senate will come to order. All those not having privileges, the floor will please vacate the chamber. Those in the gallery and those on the floor will please rise as we're led in prayer by Pastor Dick Corbin of the Union Mission in Charleston, West Virginia. Please remain standing after the prayer as the Senator from Tucker leads us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, through one of the wisest men on the earth, you had him say to us that righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. And then, Lord, you had an Old Testament prophet tell us, for the ways of the Lord are right, and the righteous will walk in them. And our prayer is this morning that you would please guide our senators in the right way today. Let it be said of this session of the West Virginia Senate that we pursued God's righteousness fearlessly, persistently, successfully. Lord, may your blessing be upon these public servants and their families. Lord, we ask that you would please bring us through this present pestilence of COVID. Unify our hearts around that which is right for the people of West Virginia. And may the mind of Christ prevail in our midst. In his name we offer this prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Senator from Tucker. Thank you, Mr. President. Will the members and guests rise for as we uh, lead the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance. Reading of the Journal. West Virginia Legislature Senate Journal, January 26, 2022. The Senate met at 11.01 a.m. Senator Blair, Mr. President and the Chair. The Senator from Pleasants requests unanimous consent that further reading of the journal be dispensed with and the journal be approved. Is there objection? Chair hears none. Further reading of the journal is dispensed with and the journal is approved. Introduction of guest. On behalf of the Senate, it is my pleasure to welcome our honorary pages for the day. Please stand as you're and be recognized as your name is called. As guests as the Senator of Randolph, we have Walker Swiger, Jacob Lass, and Michael Russell. Will the Senate please make them welcome? <laughs> Further introduction, Senator from Brooke. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, seated in the North Gallery are some, some people that are very special to me. Uh, my wife, Alex, is here today. Uh, with her is Brenda Provenzano, um, who is with my, my father-in-law, and I'm honored today to have uh, the hardest working West Virginian, I think, in the state, uh, and probably the best father-in-law in the state of West Virginia, my father-in-law, Mark Kozovic. If they could please stand, the Senate make them feel welcome. <laughs> Further introductions, Senator Frandolph. Thank you, Mr. President. Today we have with us, uh, seated in the President's Gallery, the chaperones for our honorary pages, Donald and Carol Cole, and the father of Walker Swagger, Mr. Jason Swagger. If the Senate would uh, please make them feel welcome. Further introductions. Senator from Preston. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, joining us today in the virtual audience today is John Taylor from Grafton. He's a volunteer with the AARP and the West Virginia Capital Advocacy Team, as well as Association of Retired School Employees. As many of us know, during the past sessions, the Redcoats have been a daily presence here in our galleries. And while they're not here in person this session, we welcome their participation as part of the virtual audience, watching the coverage from the homes all across the state, and we thank them for their advocacy on behalf of the 50-year-old-plus West Virginians and their families. Further introductions. Okay. Pursuant to special rule of order adopted on January 18, 2022, the chair announces that the senator from Marshall has been approved to vote by proxy and has designated the senior senator from the 17th to vote on his behalf. 
and the senator from Jefferson has been approved to vote by proxy and has designated the senior senator from the 17th to vote on her behalf. Communications from the House. The Clerk of the House announced the passage by that body of committee substitute for House Bill 4252 to reduce copay cap on insulin and devices. Message will be received and the bill will be referred to the Committee on Health and Human Resources. Committee substitute for House Bill 4276 WVU to create a Parkinson's disease registry. Message will be received and the bill will be referred to the Committee on Health and Human Resources. The House adopted House Concurrent Resolution 27, extending an invitation to His Excellency the Governor to deliver an address to the legislature and raising a joint assembly, therefore. Message will be received, Senior Senator, from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. Our question is consent that the resolution be taken up for immediate consideration. Committee reference be dispensed with, and the resolution be placed upon its adoption. Is there objection? Chair hears none. The clerk will read the resolution. House Concurrent Resolution 27, extending an invitation to His Excellency the Governor to deliver an address to the legislature and raising a joint assembly, therefore. Question is on adoption of the resolution. Is there a discussion? If not, the question is on adoption of the resolution. All those in favor will say aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the resolution adopted. On behalf of the Senate, the chair appoints the senator from Pleasance, the senior senator from the 17th, and the senior senator from the 5th to wait upon the governor. The clerk will communicate the actions of the Senate to the House. Communications from the executive. There are none. Reports from standing committees. Your Committee on Economic Development has had under consideration Senate Bill 5, creating West Virginia Unmanned Aircraft Systems Advisory Council, and reports back a committee substitute for same, with the recommendation that the committee substitute do pass, respectfully submitted Chandler Swope, Chair. The report be received. Your Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development has had under consideration Senate Bill 126, expanding types of agricultural operations that are protected from nuisance and other legal actions, and reports back a committee substitute for same, with the recommendation that the committee substitute do pass, but under the original double committee reference, first be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary, respectfully submitted, Dave Seipel, Chair. The report be received, and under the original double committee reference, the bill will be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. Your Committee on Natural Resources has had under consideration Senate Bill 264 relating to Conservation Districts Law of West Virginia, and reports back a committee substitute for same, with the recommendation that the committee substitute do pass, but under the original double committee reference, first be referred to the Committee on Government Organization, respectfully submitted, Bill Hamilton, Chair. Report will be received, and under the original double committee reference, the bill will be referred to the Committee on Government Organization. Your Committee on Pensions has had under consideration Senate Bill 270 relating to employment benefits for public safety personnel, and reports back a committee substitute for same, with the recommendation that the committee substitute do pass, but under the original double committee reference, first be referred to the Committee on Finance, respectfully submitted, Eric Nelson, Jr., Chair. The report be received and under the original double committee reference, the bill will be referred to the Committee on Finance. Your Committee on the Judiciary has had under consideration Senate Bill 439, adopting Revised Uniform Athlete Agents Act of 2015, and reports back a committee substitute for same. Senate Bill 452, permitting civil remedies for unauthorized disclosure of intimate images, and reports back a committee substitute for same and Senate Bill 453, establishing uniform requirements for restrictive employment agreements and reports back a committee substitute for same, with the recommendation that the three committee substitutes do pass, respectfully submitted, Charles S. Trump IV, Chair. Report be received. Your Committee on the Judiciary has had under consideration Senate Bill 440, establishing uniform commercial real estate receivership act and reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass, respectfully submitted, Charles S. Trump IV, Chair. Report be received. 
Your Committee on Pensions has had under consideration Senate Bill 442 relating to West Virginia Public Employee Retirement System and Senate Bill 443 including police and firefighter as electors of trustees for certain pension funds and reports the same back with the recommendation that they each do pass but under the original double committee references first be referred to the Committee on Finance respectfully submitted Eric Nelson Jr. Chair. Report will be received, and under the original double committee reference, the bill will be referred to the Committee on Finance. Your Committee on Finance has had under consideration Senate Bill 450, updating definitions of West Virginia Personal Income Tax Act, and Senate Bill 451, updating definitions of West Virginia Corporation Net Income Tax Act, and reports the same back with a recommendation that they each do pass. Respectfully submitted, Eric J. Tarr, Chair. Report be received. Report from select committees. There are none. Introduction of bills. Senior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I request unanimous consent that Senate Bill 493 through Senate Bill 496 be considered introduced, read by their titles, and referred to the appropriate committees as shown on the chamber automation system. Senior Senator from the 17th request unanimous consent that the Senate Bills 493 through Senate Bills 496 be considered introduced, read by their titles, and referred to the appropriate committees as shown on the chamber automation system. Is there objection? Chair hears none. So ordered. Resolutions. Senate Resolution 15 by Senator Grady, designating January 28, 2022, as Women's and Girls' Day. Under the rules of the Senate, the resolution will lie over one day. Motions. Petitions. There are none. Unfinished business. Senate Concurrent Resolution 9, naming the Haney Family Veterans Memorial Bridge. Question is on adoption of the resolution. Is there discussion? If not, the question before the Senate is adoption of the resolution. All those in favor will say aye. aye. All those no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the resolution adopted. The clerk will communicate the action of the Senate to the House. Committee substitute for Senate Concurrent Resolution 11, naming the Dennis E. Davis Veterans Nursing Home. Question is on adoption of the resolution. Is there discussion? If not, question before the Senate this, shall the resolution pass? All those in favor will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the resolution adopted. The clerk will communicate the actions of the Senate to the House. Committee substitute for Senate Concurrent Resolution 13, naming the U.S. Army Private First Class Joseph Stanley McKinney Memorial Bridge. The question is on adoption of the resolution. Is there discussion? If not, the question for the Senate is the Senate adopt the resolution. Is all those in favor say aye? aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the resolution adopted. The clerk will communicate your action of the Senate to the House. Senate concurrent S resolution. Fifth. One moment. Senior Senator from Fifth, what purpose? Uh, request an amnesty said to return to the second order of business. Is there objection? Chair hears none. Senator, Senior Senator from the Fifth. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, on behalf of the whole Senate, but in particular the uh, uh, Senator from Cabell, we're, we're very pleased to have a guest with us today, uh, Dr. Josh Baker, who is the president of Mount West Community and Technical College. Josh, if you would stand and we'd welcome you. Are there further introductions? Unfinished business. Senate Concurrent Resolution 15, naming the U.S. Army Private Shirley E. Bailey Memorial Bridge. Question is on adoption of the resolution. Is there discussion? If not, the question is adoption of the resolution. All those in favor will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the resolution adopted. And the clerk will communicate the action to the Senate from the House. Senate concurrent resolution 22, naming the U.S. Army Private First Class Clifford O. Eckerd Memorial Bridge. Resolution will be referred to the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure. Senate Concurrent Resolution 23, naming the U.S. Marine Corps Corporal Guy Maywood Edwards Memorial Bridge. Res the resolution will be referred to the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure. Senate Concurrent Resolution 24, naming the U.S. Marine Corps Corporal Roger Lee Booth Memorial Road. Resolution will be referred to the Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure. Bills on third reading.
Engrossed committee substitute for Senate Bill 246 requiring newly constructed public schools and public schools with major improvements to have water bottle filling stations. Question is on passage to bill. Senior Senator from 17. Thank you, Mr. President. Our question is consent for the bill to lie over one day while retaining its place on the calendar. Is there objection? Chair hears none. So order. Further bills. Engrossed committee substitute for committee substitute for Senate Bill 262 relating generally to financial institutions engaged in boycotts of energy companies. Third reading of the bill. Question is on passage the bill. Senior Senator from the fourth. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, in 2021, West Virginia was the second largest producer of coal in the country, um, over 82 million tons. This bill addresses financial institutions that have chosen to boycott the energy producing states uh, with regards to um, doing business in those states. So Mr. President, the purpose of this bill is to allow the state treasurer to decline to do business with any financial institution that has a policy of boycotting doing business with the fossil fuel based energy companies. This bill would require the treasurer to prepare a list of financial institutions known as the the quote, restricted financial institution list, unquote. This would be a list of financial institutions the treasurer has identified as maintaining a boycott of energy companies. A financial institution would be included on the list unless the financial institution has an ordinary business purpose for the refusal of, to do business with an energy company. In preparing the list, the treasurer is permitted to consider publicly available information. This list is required to be updated at least annually, but may be updated more frequently at the prerogative of the treasurer. The list must also be posted on the treasurer's webpage with copies provided to the governor, Senate president, and the speaker. Once a financial institution is added to the list, the treasurer will be required to place them on notice of their potential inability to enter into or, excuse me, the potential inability to enter into or remain in banking arrangements with the state of West Virginia. Upon receipt of this notice, the company may provide the treasurer with information demonstrating that it is not engaged in a boycott or has ceased all such activity. If the treasurer is satisfied that this is correct, the institution must be removed from the list. In the bidding process, a financial institution may be disqualified by the treasurer, and the treasurer may refuse to enter into a contract if they are on the restricted list. The treasurer may also require, as a provision of any contract, a provision not to engage in an energy boycott. Finally, the bill has a limitation of liability for public entities and officials in taking actions involved in complying with the newly created section. Mr. President, I urge passage of the bill. Question is on passage of the bill. Is there a discussion? Senator from Morgan. Thank you, Mr. President. Pursuant to Rule 43 of the Rules of the West Virginia Senate, I ask for a ruling of the chair on whether or not I should be excused or disqualified from voting on this matter. I serve as a director of a West Virginia financial institution. It's an opinion of the chair. You're a member of a class and you'll be required to vote. Are there other Rule 43s? Junior Senator from the 17th. Same request. Same response. Okay. You'll be required to vote. <laughs> Are there further Rule 43s before we get to discussion? Junior, Sen Junior Senator from the 17th, discussion. Yes, speak to the bill. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, 262 obviously is a, a, a sincere effort to show our um, strength and what we care about in our energy sector in West Virginia, whether it's coal or natural gas. But this bill comes to us with um, some financial consequences or financial concerns uh, coming from the treasurer. And we heard in two committees, you know, our state treasurer manages over $8 billion of short-term monies that are the state's state agencies or other, other individuals, uh, a big responsibility. We also heard from him that he has these funds deployed in as many as 30 institutions and that the effect of this bill could potentially eliminate two of those 30. We also heard that you know, he's primarily a deposit taker. 
a funds management person in cash management, does not have any lending or capital deployment. And I stand up with a, I come out of the financial industry, and I stand up with some concerns as it relates to what does this, what kind of message does this potentially send out nationally and, and whatnot. We have, we have these national firms and we have many state firms that basically money comes in from the state and then they turn around and they either invest that money, even in these energy companies, or they put that money out in loans. And I think our biggest concern here as a legislative body and should always be is how can we improve capital needs in this state, not only for our energy sector, but all sectors, and especially as we look to diversify. My caution is that the bill does allow the treasurer to make this decision. And we do not know the future of that particular person or control. And I have a concern with that. We have the concern of uh, capital needs again. And what does this send out as we are bringing in new companies as it relates to capital? And you know, there is a double-edged sword out there. We have certain New York firms and others that talk one thing as it relates to green energy or anything else. But it's quite interesting if one were to look at these investment companies and what makes up their investment portfolio, by gosh, it's a lot of energy. But no, they don't talk about that in the executive chair. And I think that that's wrong. But they sure as heck put those dollars behind our energy companies, which we all should be proud of. I will be voting no against this, and it's more from a cautionary standpoint. The bill has been improved in both the committees it went through, because one of the things that was added in here is regular banking activities or financial activities. Um, you know, banks through time have different risk components, and at any one time, they may choose to not invest in a particular industry. This bill does not affect those type decisions, which is very good. The other thing that was added to this bill that was very good is it does not affect our investment management board, who manages over $20 billion of our pension money and others, and they've done a wonderful job. This bill will not affect that because of the new additions. I'm hopeful that there may be some new changes in the other body and it comes back, but at this time, I will be a no. But thank you, Mr. President. Further discussion? Senator from Ohio. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. You know, um, my, my father was a coal miner, and I worked in the coal mine uh, four year myself. And you know, I owe um, my survival, my living conditions uh, to the uh, coal industry. See, I'm not against coal. I'll repeat this. I'm not against coal. But what I am against is bad laws. And Senate Bill 262 is a bad policy. It's not only about bad law. It's also about hypocrisy. What about the individual freedom to boycott? What this bill does, it eliminates that freedom to boycott. What happened to that belief in the free market? What this bill does, it's, it chooses winners and losers what about that ma mantra that uh, the Republican Party always saying, let uh, the government get out of the way of business. But I see this as uh, the government getting in the way of business and picking and choosing. How far can a government intrude upon a private business? That's the question that must be answered. 
And when I read this bill and read the language in this bill, this bill, by listing names in public, is a way of coercion of private businesses. There is no doubt about it. So I guess if you do the right thing, then we'll take your name off. But as long as you don't agree with us and do what we tell you to do, we'll leave your name on this list at the detriment, hoping at the detriment of your business. This bill is doing the same thing to private businesses as private, you said private businesses doing to the coal company. This is a bad bill. You know, this is a slippery slope that we're on. We don't know how this bill will be interpreted. From my understanding, when I read different laws, people always find loopholes in these laws to do something else. In the words of one of your most famous and brightest stars, Sarah Palin, she said, you cannot put lipstick on a pig, and this bill is a pig. Further discussion, Senior Senator from the 8th. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Would the Senator from the 4th Will the Senator Senator please? Yield? Senator Yield. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I just got a couple questions I want to make sure that I get clear um, that I understand. You know, we, <clears throat> we have done a lot here lately to, um, from an economic development standpoint, to be able to reach out and draw these companies into the state. Um, and I heard the senator from the 17th mention about other agencies. I just want to make sure that I'm clear on that this piece of legislation does not affect our other agencies, especially our economic development agency as far as financial incentives for other companies to be able to, that we can attract here. No, it's not, it's not necessarily a financial incentive bill for anything with regards to economic development. What this does is that the treasurer oversees the state's essentially operational fund for the state. Um, and that's alluded to the other senator that, uh, from Canal that mentioned the, um, the $8 billion that's there. Those are deposits, the ACHs and things like that, that he enters into to manage that money for contracts. So a bank would, that would contract with the state of West Virginia for that is essentially going in to have a contract to hold the taxpayer's money, and then they're making earnings off that taxpayer's money as we are using it as a services to fund our agencies. This is not an economic development side of things. Okay, thank you. And one more question. Um, it has to do with our political subdivisions. Say um, uh, a county commission or a board of education enters into a contract with a, another company, and the other company has um, a relationship with a financial institution that has been placed on that list. What happens there? This, these are with contracts directly with the treasurer, is what it relates to, and no other contracts. So these other public subdivisions are fine to continue to do business? That's correct because there's no contract with the treasurer in order for them to do those business, the business okay. with those companies. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Thank you, Mr. President. Further discussion? Senior Senator from the 6th. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to rise in support of this bill. It actually it will put a statement out there. Uh, the financial institutions, I read where one is uh, investing $9 trillion and uh, if we continue to allow these uh, investment firms to dictate what uh, industries are okay and not okay, then we'll be answering to them. And by passing this bill here, it makes a statement that uh, West Virginia is not going to allow uh, corporatism to be in our state and tell us what we can uh, get behind and what we can't. This state if any, needs to get behind this bill and uh, support our coal industry, they're struggling to receive financial means to do business. Besides all the other issues the coal industry has, 
and this is just one more way to help them out. And, you know, would it be more politically correct not to, to pass this bill? Yes. But we need to be willing to, to make some moves and stand up for uh, industry that uh, should not be boycotted. Thank you, Mr. President. Further discussion? Senator from Tucker. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I stand in support of the bill. Uh, I didn't realize this bill was so important when I got it in my committee. Or, uh, but, you know, it was sent to my committee, single referenced, and I wanted to, and I asked that it be sent to another committee, finance, so we could air it out and just explain exactly what it does. And evidently it didn't do much good because there's still a lot of uh, fog in this bill. Uh, you could say, uh, you know, all it is is a, a statement. Uh, you know, whether you like fossil fuels or not, you know, it's been a whole part of my life, 43 years of my life, and, uh, you know, I'm for all energy or, or whatever. And uh, all this is is a, a statement. It does nothing. It does not restrict any business. It does not restrict a bank from, uh, uh, you know, investing in West Virginia. All it does, and our state treasurer, or, uh, he has the... Uh, uh, the means now to do this if he wants to. All this is is a statement to a bully, and we all have bullies in our life, the saying, listen, we're going, us and 16 other states are going to st stick together, and you can do this if you want to, but we're telling you, if you do this, then we can make a statement, and we don't have to do business with you. If you go to a restaurant and get bad food, you have the right not to go back to that restaurant and get more bad food. Or if you, you have a bank that messes up your bank statements all the time, you have, an op you have the right to go to a different bank because they're not providing the service. Or, you know, uh, you know, I know some banks just here recently uh, with the pandemic, you know, I know people that has left banks because of policies with their banks. They have the right to do that. We still have the free market. This is what's great about this country. You can exercise your freedom most of the time and, and do what you feel is right with your beliefs. Whether people like it or not, we're an energy state. We're an energy producing state. We always have and we probably all, always will be one way or the other. And this is just a statement for our companies in our state that we depend on tremendously. If you look at the, uh, look at the, the revenue statements, <laughs> we really like them this year. And it's just a, a, a statement saying, you know, we support you. You know, we're going we're gonna to make a statement. You know, we're not, uh, not crashing our financial world. All we're doing is making a statement with 16 other states that says, you know, uh, you guys can do this if you want to. But we don't have to use you if you don't, we don't want to. It doesn't say we will not use you. It just says we have the right not to use you. So with that being said, Mr. President, I believe we're overthinking this bill. You know, it's another, we got a lot of these, the skies are falling bills. Uh, when we wake up, hopefully in the morning, the sun will still come up. And, uh, but we're, we're letting our men and women in the energy sector know that we support them. And we're letting our, our uh, energy companies know that we support them. And uh, with, that, with that, I'd like to ask for Rule 53. Is it 49? 43. What is it? 43. 43, sorry. 45 in the house, isn't it? <laughs> 43, because I, I work for an energy company, and the banks own a good bit of what I have, so I would like a, a, a it's ruling on that. It's a chair that you're a member of class and you'll be required to vote. Further discussion? Senator from Randolph. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, this is like the writ large version of this, and yet it's not really that hard to see that um, in the not too distant future, we could have banks deciding that they're not gonna loan money to a homeowner or a potential homeowner because they don't have solar panels on the roof. Or we could have uh, banks deciding that they no longer loan money to uh, you know, people to buy a car unless it's a hybrid or a battery powered car. 
And so, you know, you have to look at some of these things that are happening farther downrange than merely what's happening today. Um, and, you know, uh, Senator from uh, Tucker was making, I, I think, a point in addition to that that we need to consider. Um, you know, these banks are making a policy decision, and they have the right to make a policy decision and say, we're not going to do business with or we're not going to loan to in many ways. They may have that right. Um, just as every single West Virginian has a right to make a policy decision and say, I'm not going to do business with that bank or uh, that financial institution because I don't like their policies. But at a certain point, that sort of percolates up through the body politic, and that's what we actually do here is we represent those individuals all across West Virginia, and we broadly hear from our constituents that they support the coal industry, they support the natural gas industry, and so they may make individual one-off statements to their bank why they're not going to do business there anymore. But what this really is is a policy statement from the state of West Virginia that says we're not going to do business with you if you have a policy that we don't like. This isn't making uh, them into some type of a, a criminal enterprise. It just simply says that if you want us as a customer, then you have to be friendly to the things that we support. Our citizens do it every day, and every decision that they make related to financial institutions is whether or not they want to continue that relationship. And we've heard from enough of them to say that we would like to have a policy statement from our representatives in the legislature that we don't want to do business with financial institutions that do not support the state of West Virginia and the industries that are critical to the state of West Virginia. So I urge passage. Further discussion? Senator from Logan. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, my, my colleagues hit some very good points and probably stowed a lot of my words I was going to say. You know, but, but where does it stop? We're going to be forced to buy electric cars against our will. We like gas and diesel vehicles. You know, I spent eight years across the hall fighting for coal. This is my 10th year fighting for coal, coal fossil fuel. It's evident that the, the federal administration is against fossil fuel. Texas has this bill, signed it into law last year, has not changed a thing. There's 16 states total, including us, that is looking at similar legislation just like this, drawn a line in the sand, saying, hey, we're taking our money, investing in your firm, but you don't like where our money comes from. If you vote against this bill, you're voting against the coal miner, you're voting against the guy in the gas fields, the pipeliner. I mean, I'm sorry, you're, you're voting my job. I sell electric motors, you're voting against my job. I am here to protect West Virginia. Like my colleague said from Tucker, we are an energy state, fossil fuel. You're going to give up on it? I think our revenues are showing tremendous gains, and at any time the federal government could just pull the plug on us and we're gone. We should not invest our money in an institution that doesn't support what we do to get that money to them. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the lead sponsor on this bill, and I'm proud to be the lead sponsor of it, and I encourage everybody to vote yes. Thank you. Further discussion before I recognize the senior senator from the fourth to close debate. Senator from Marion. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm going to rise in support of this bill. I, I struggled with it uh, and its constitutionality and the discussions I've had with many of my colleagues, but I'm going to tell you what I like about this bill. The treasurer himself and many in leadership have singled out a company called BlackRock. I don't know if any of you ever heard of Warrior Met Coal, but Warrior Met Coal is a company in Alabama that 1,100 of my brothers and sisters work at and have been on strike for almost a year. BlackRock owns 13% of Warrior Met Coal. And they refused to bargain in good faith with the members of the union down there. All those guys want is what they had back in 2016, and they're making tons of money off the backs of hardworking people, and BlackRock is at the table. Our members have been to New York protesting in front of BlackRock's offices, and they're divesting in coal, but not only are they divesting in coal, they're di divesting in hardworking American coal miners. I'm for this bill, Mr. President, and I thank you for putting it on the agenda. 
Further discussion? Senior Senator from the fourth to close debate. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, I think um, the members that have expressed caution around this bill um, know this, but I think that everybody in West Virginia who's paying attention should know this too. As finance chair of the Senate, I took extreme caution when, at first glance on this and was leery of what I saw because I didn't really understand what they were trying to do and exactly how they're going about it. And so as I started looking into the bill and realized that this does not affect our investment management board or BTI, it's also known as Board of Treasury Investments, um, I knew that it wasn't going to have a fiscal impact on the state, for one, that was protected. The second thing is, is looking at this, is that there is a slippery slope. One of the senators mentioned that we have a slippery slope to worry about. The slippery slope is with the banks. It's not with the state of West Virginia, because the treasurer does not regulate banks. The treasurer represents West Virginia as a market participant to do contracts with banks on where to put the money that your constituents pay in taxes to the state of West Virginia. There are banks that are taking action to go in and weaponize the earnings they make off your constituents' taxpayer dollars against them. This is a bill to protect every West Virginian, whether they work in the energy sector or not. On any given year, severance tax is about 8.5% of our budget on average. This year, it's way more than that. And there's been other years, it's been way more than that. But it's about 8.5% of our budget. This in no way is going in and telling a business that they cannot boycott the energy sector. They can, they can absolutely, they can go right down the line and continue to boycott it. And that's the slippery slope that could happen. They can do it every day. But what we're going to say is, all right, if you're going to use the citizens of West Virginia's money against them, go do business somewhere else. It gives the treasurer that authority. Mr. President, I strongly urge passage of this bill. Question for the Senate is, shall the bill pass? All those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk shall prepare the machine. <laughs> Senior Senator from the 17th, how does the Senator from Marshall vote? Thank you, Mr. President. The Senator from Marshall votes yay. How does the Senator from Jefferson vote? The Senator from Jefferson votes yay. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? If so, the clerk will close the machine and ascertain the results. On this question, 31 yeas, 2 nays, 1 absent, not voting. More than a majority of those present and voting having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill passed. The clerk will communicate the actions of the Senate to the House. Engrossed committee substitute for Senate Bill 437, providing for early discharge of parolees. Third reading of the bill. Question is on passage of the bill. Senator from Morgan. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee substitute for Senate Bill 437 would amend our state code uh, in one section. Uh, it would affect and enact an amendment to West Virginia Code Chapter 62, Article 12, Section 18. And uh, Article 12 of Chapter 62 is uh, parole and uh, periods of parole. This section deals with discharge of a parole. So the bill addresses uh, not when people are going to be paroled from prison, but it addresses people who've already been paroled. They're on parole. And the question is when or how they may be released from parole. Under current law, uh, there has to be a convening of the parole board to discharge somebody for parole. And as we all know, over the last couple of years, there have been big issues with COVID and convening the parole board, uh, holding those hearings. This bill says simply that the commissioner of the Di Division of Corrections and Rehabilitations uh, may submit a request to the chairperson of the board of parole and that the chairperson can affect the discharge or release of somebody from parole. So this is somebody who's been on parole for at least a year, uh, hasn't violated his parole. Uh, those people get released, their parole gets dismissed early. Uh, the process for that is changed slightly in this. Instead of having the full parole board or a panel thereof, it could be done by the chairperson. Be happy to try to answer any questions. Otherwise, I urge passage of the bill.
The question is on passage of the bill. Is there discussion? If not, the question before the Senate is, shall the bill pass? All those in favor will vote yay. Those opposed will vote nay. The clerk shall prepare the seat. Senior Senator from the 17th, how does the Senator from Marshall vote? Thank you, Mr. President. The Senator from Marshall votes yay. How does the Senator from Jefferson vote? Senator from Jefferson votes yay. Has every member voted? Has every member voted? Let's have the clerk close the machine ascertain the results on this question. 33 yeas, 0 nays, 1 absent, not voting. More than a majority of those present voting haven't voted in the affirmative. I declare the bill passed. Senior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill be made effective from passage and request unanimous consent that the roll call used on passage of the bill be used to make it so effective. Senior Senator from the 17th moves that the bill be made effective from passage and request unanimous consent that the roll call used on the passage of the bill be used to make it so effective. Is there objection? Chair, here's none. On this question, 33 yeas, zero nays, one absent and not voting. More than two-thirds of those elected to the Senate having voted in the affirmative, I declare the bill effective from passage, and the clerk will communicate the actions of the Senate to the House. Bill's on second reading. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 431 relating generally to Uniform Controlled Substances Act. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? Yes, sir. Senator Trump moved to amend the bill on page 1, section... 416 lines 14 through 17. Senator from Brooke. Mr. President, request unanimous consent to explain the amendment in lieu of having it read. Is there objection? Chair, here is none. Senator from Brooke. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, the amendment that we have before us, uh, what it does is that it splits subsection C into two separate paragraphs. Uh, as this bill came out of the committee, sub C specifically just dealt with defining the phrase engaged in illegal use of conduct or use of a controlled substance with another. Uh, part of the discussion uh, in committee, Mr. President, uh, revolved around what exactly medical assistance meant uh, when an individual is, is, is required to uh, seek medical assistance for an individual who is having a medical uh, emergency due to an overdose of a controlled substance. And so Subsequent to the committee meeting, we came across a, a decision of our Supreme Court uh, made this past March involving a case out of uh, Mon County on this statute uh, that's in front of us, 60A4416. Uh, and that case actually set out a definition of, uh, of what seeking medical attention is, and that's what we have before us. Uh, it follows closely to that, but we also added uh, extra language on the, the, the bottom of that because we, uh, part of the discussion also uh, involved the use of naloxone and the administration of naloxone. And so what uh, paragraph number two here seeks to do is, is to find medical attention that it is uh, seeking uh, contacting an emergency system, 911, uh, poison control facility or any type of first responder, a medical facility or medical professional capable of treating an overdose and in the case of an opioid overdose, uh, when naloxone would help uh, administer or cause the administration of a commercially produced or medically recognized opioid antagonist, which is what naloxone does. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions, and I urge adoption of the amendment. Is there a discussion? If not, the question for the Senate is adoption of the amendment offered by the Senator from Brooke. All those in favor will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I'd I declare the amendment adopted. Are there further amendments to the bill? No, sir. The bill will be engrossed in advance to third reading. Senate Bill 435, awarding service weapon to retiree from Division of Protective Services. Second reading of the bill. Senator for Cabo, what purpose did you seek recognition? Thank you, Mr. President. I request unanimous consent the, to return to the second order of business. Is there objection? Chair, here is none. Senator from Cabo. Thank you, Mr. President. Appreciate that. Um, I've noticed uh, that we have been joined in the South Gallery by a group of steel workers from Huntington, West Virginia. So it is my pleasure uh, on behalf of my senior senator from the fifth to tell us, tell everyone a little bit about them. These folks uh, work at a company called Special Metals, which formerly was known as INCO which has been in Huntington for 100 years. One of its claims, claims to fame is that the Manhattan Project had its roots at INCO Special Metals uh, as a part of winning the Second World War because it was at our facility 
that uranium-235 was, in fact, separated from raw nickel. And that led to creation of the atomic bomb and a top secret project that ended the Second World War. These are the folks that are our Little League coaches. They donate blood. They're carrying on food drives. They're the folks that are just the pillars of your community. Sadly, they are in a labor dispute that's gone on for more than 100 days over health care. Berkshire Hathaway owns special metals. And Berkshire Hathaway, of course, is Warren Buffett's baby. So I thought the other day, Mr. President, who in the world can we find that will intervene on their behalf to end this labor stoppage? And I noticed yesterday we had what's been called as the most important man in America in our presence, Senator Joe Manchin, representing each and every citizen of West Virginia and each and every one of those folks in the South Gallery. So I call upon Senator Joe Manchin to get in touch with Mr. Warren Buffett and resolve these health care issues and put these people back to work. So will you, ladies and gentlemen, from Huntington, West Virginia and, and its surrounding areas, stand and be welcomed by the Senate. Further introductions, Senator from Preston. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President, under a second order of business. Um, how many times have I stood here on the floor and talked about the wonderful things that the Mountaineer Challenge Academy has done at least a dozen times over the years? But today we have a family who's very proud sitting in the North Gallery, and I would ask them to rise, the Farkas family, Rhonda, Jay, mother and father, and brother Eric. Um, I have placed on everyone's desk today a press release from last week about a Preston County native who becomes the first West Virginia Challenge cadet appointed to West Point. And I understand, and I hope I'm not incorrect about this, that's the first time this has ever happened in the entire United States. And it's families like this that uh, can make our state proud. And we're pleased to have them here today and pleased to Senate make them feel welcome. Further introductions? Further? <laughs> Senior Senator from the Fifth. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I request and ask consent that the remarks from the Senator from Ohio on Senate Bill 262 be printed in the appendix of the journal. Is there objection? Chair hears none. Senior Senator from the 17th. Mr. President, I also request unanimous consent that the remarks by the senior senator from the 4th, junior senator from the 17th, senior senator from the 6th, senator from Tucker, Randolph, Morgan, and Marion regarding Senate Bill 262 also be placed in the appendix of the journal. Is there objection? Chair hears none. So ordered. Father Bill's on second reading. Senate Bill 435, awarding service weapon to retiree from Division of Protective Services. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? No, sir. The bill be engrossed in advanced third reading. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 449, relating to nonviolent offense parole program. Second reading of the bill. Are there amendments to the bill? No, sir. The bill be or engrossed in advanced third reading. Bills on first reading, senior senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. I request unanimous consent that all bills on first reading be considered read a first time and advanced to second reading. Is there objection? Chair hears none. Bills be advanced. Introduction to guest. Remarks by members. Senator from Marion. Thank you, Mr. Very much, Mr. President. I just want to reflect a little bit on what my. Uh, friend from Cabell talked about these steel workers that uh, have been struggling for 100 days, 100 plus days uh, in Huntington that do great work for the steel industry and are great American workers. And it just, just bothers me to no end, Mr. President, because I don't know how many people in here have ever been on strike. I have many, many times. I don't know how many people have led strikes. 
I have many, many times. And a strike is a situation that some folks on the other side like to think unions enjoy doing. I want to assure my colleagues in this body, someone who speaks from experience, someone who has led many strikes and someone who's been on strike many times, that a strike is always, Mr. President, I repeat, always the last resort. You see, we don't go to the bargaining table and ask for a dollar if we know you only got a dime. We do great work in researching the companies that our members work for, and we try to bargain and negotiate in good faith because we know, Mr. President, that without the company, we don't have jobs. But without good workers, the company is not a profitable business. So I've always been bothered by the fact that we have to fight and we have to struggle and we have to be so divided when it comes time to negotiate a new contract. Because I know firsthand, I know firsthand that we don't ask for things that are not due to us and we don't ask for things that we don't deserve. And we don't like going to the bargaining table when the company proposes take backs. We can usually get through a contract from A to X pretty easy. But when it gets to health care, what I call X, Y, and Z, that's where it gets tough. Everybody in America knows we have problems with our health care system, but nobody wants to know how to fix it. And nobody wants to help workers like these folks with special medals get a fair contract with health care so they can provide for their families. As the senator from Cabell said, these are little league coaches. These folks give blood. These are volunteers at the playground. These are members of the PTO. These aren't outlaws. These aren't bandits. These are our friends. These are our neighbors. These are the pillars of our community. And all they want is a fair shake. All they want is a fair shake. I call on the corporate executives of Special Metals and the leadership of the United Steelworkers to get to the bargaining table. Find common ground. Find compromise. Let's get these people back to work so they can provide for their families. They're not asking for the moon here, ladies and gentlemen. They're asking for what's due to them. They're asking for their fair share, and I believe they deserve it. And I, once again, call on both parties to get to the bargaining table and don't leave the table till you get an agreement. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator from Preston. <laughs> Senator be in order. Senator from Preston. Thank you, Mr. President. Solemn occasion today. Um, Zach is coming home. He will be escorted by the state troopers and Marines to Kingwood this evening. Zach Wayne Riffle was an 18-year-old. He enjoyed sports and played football and wrestled while attending Preston High School. The public is invited to welcome his body of private first class, Zachary Wayne Riffle, who passed from a tactical vehicle rollover near Jacksonville, North Carolina. He was landing support specialist with Combat Logistics Battalion 24, Combat Logistics Regiment 2, 2nd Marine Logistics Group. He will be returning home to Kingwood on Thursday, January 27th. The flight will arrive in Pittsburgh at 7.25 p.m., then heading to Kingwood, driving past his parents' home at 329 East Main Street and his grandparents' home on Brown Avenue. Then on to the Boyard Funeral Home in Newburgh. The family is asking residents to gather at the Buckwheat Festival ground in honor of a fallen soldier. Mr. President, may I ask for a moment of silence? All rise. Thank you. Be seated. Further remarks? Junior Senator from Nate. 
Yes, Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that the comments made by the Senator from Preston, Marion, and Cabell be published in the appendix of the journal. Is there objection? Chair, here's none. So order. Senator from Montegalia. Mr. President, uh, ladies and gentlemen, today is uh, International Holocaust Day. And it uh, kind of escaped my radar. Typically, I would have had some remarks prepared to uh, present here to the floor. Uh, so in lieu of my remarks, I ask that uh, for a moment of silence to recognize those six million lives that were lost during that time frame. Please rise. Thank you. Senator from Cabell. Mr. President, uh, I want to ask unanimous consent that the comments, remarks uh, by the Senator from Mon County uh, be uh, printed in the appendix of the journal and will note that those lives were not only lost, they were taken. They were taken. They were murdered. Is there objection? Chair, is not so ordered. Further remarks. Miscellaneous business. Senior Senator from the 17th. Thank you, Mr. President. Subject to announcements, I move the Senate stand adjourned until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning and also have an announcement. Uh, tonight, uh, we have the State of the State, and so if the body would reassemble here at 645 promptly, uh, we're going to go over together in unison, so uh, we're together. So at, again, 645, please don't be late. Thank you. Further announcements. Senior Senator from the 4th. Thank you, Mr. President. Today, your Committee on Finance will meet at 3 p.m. in room 451M for budget hearings with the Department of Transportation and the Parkways Authority. Further announcements. Senator from Morgan. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Your Committee on the Judiciary will meet this afternoon at 3 o'clock p.m. in the Judiciary Committee Room 208 West Wing. Senior Senator from the 6th. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Committee on Government Organization will be meet today at 2 p.m. in Room 208 West. Agenda has been posted. Senator from Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Committee on Energy will meet today at 1 p.m. in 208 West. Uh, for energy meeting and uh, agenda has been posted. Senator from Mason. Mr. President, your Committee on Health and Human Resources will meet at 1 p.m. today in room 451M and the agenda has been posted. Further announcements, Senator from Raleigh. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Committee on Education will meet at 2 o'clock in room 451M. The agenda has been posted. Further announcements, Senator from Marion. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The AFL-CIO Labor Caucus will be held immediately upon adjournment in room 330 West, and lunch will be provided. Are there further announcements? If not, the question for the Senate is the Senate stand adjourned until 9 a.m. tomorrow. All those in favor will say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. I declare the Senate adjourned until 9 a.m. tomorrow. House will please be in order. Those persons not having privileges at the floor will please vacate the chamber. Members and guests in the galleries will please rise as we are led in prayer today by the gentleman of the 10th, Delegate Conley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Shall we pray? Father, we come to you today and we certainly want to thank you for everything that you have done for us and everything that you'll continue to do for us. And we certainly want to thank you also for the opportunity to serve the people of West Virginia as legislators here in this beautiful body. We just pray that you'll be with us and all of our leaders all across the country that anything we do, any decisions we made will be, number one, to glorify you, but also what we do would be in the best interest of, the, uh, of our constituents. Father, please continue to be with our military personnel put a hedge of protection around them, both at home and abroad. Uh, Father, we know we live in some very dangerous times, and we just ask that hedge of protection for those folks that they be returned to their homes. And we pray that you'll be with those people, uh, those military folks as families as well. Give them comfort and peace, Father, knowing that their loved ones are away in a foreign land protecting us so that it does not have to be done here. Also, Father, be with our first responders, our policemen, our firefighters, our uh, EMTs. Lord, we know that they go out there every day and put their lives on the line to protect us, and we thank you for that. We also ask that you be with all of those that are sick. We have so much sickness among us right now with the COVID-19. We know, Father, that you're the one that can eradicate this, and we just ask that you touch all of those people. and. 
Father, we just want to end by saying that, that we love you and thank you again for everything that you do for us. These things we ask in your name. Amen. 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 Members of guests, please remain standing as we are led in the Pledge of Allegiance today by the gentleman from the 9th, Doug Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will those in the galleries join the members in saying the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag? I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Members of guests may be seated. Reading of the journal. Journal of the House of Delegates, Wednesday, January 26th, 2022. Gentleman of the 10th, Doug Kelly. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that further reading of the journal be dispensed with and that it be approved as having been read. The gentleman of the 10th, Doug Kelly, ask unanimous consent that the further reading of the journal be dispensed with and that it be approved as having been read. Are there objections? There are no objections. Introductions? Introductions. Gentleman of the 32nd, Doug Haynes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the West Gallery, I have a couple of special guests with me. Uh, my mom and my stepdad, who is also a Fayette County Commissioner, if they would stand and if the House would, please make them welcome. <laughs> Lady, my 32nd, Doug Kessinger. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have several guests in the chamber today. We've got all of our foster families that are here. I'm at the Capitol today, and so we have a building full of people that I would classify as heroes. Um, and so in the North Gallery, I have a couple of guests. Um, spending his birthday with us today is Rob Cornelius. If he would stand in the house and make him welcome. And then additionally, I have a woman who is not just a constituent, but a friend and is actually truly um, somebody that I would consider a hero. She has fostered over 70 foster children, giving them a place um, where they know they are loved um, and a home um, to experience that, that, that feeling of being wanted. And so she's here representing Safe Haven today. With Her name's Christy Beaver, and she's here with Mandy Isaacs and one of the 70 children that she's fostered, Xavier, and and his adopted mother, uh, Mandy Isaac. So if they would stand in the house and make them welcome. The gentleman the fourth, Doug Reynolds. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to, on behalf of myself and uh, Lisa Zukoff, I'd like to announce uh, an introduction to our police chief, Tom Mitchell from Moundsville. West Virginia. Thank you for being here. The gentleman of the 13th, Doug Pinson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Joining us in all three galleries, we have um, individuals from uh, West Virginia uh, foster families. We have adoption families here. We have kinship families that are here. And uh, foster children, as been mentioned by the lady from the 32nd, um, I appreciate Marissa Sanders with West Virginia Foster Adoptive Kinship and Partner uh, Parents Network being here. And then, Mr. Speaker, joining us in the West Gallery are five of the most awesome people that I know on the entire planet. Let's start with my daughter, Avery. Uh, if she will please stand. Jonah, if he will please stand. Joel, if he will please stand, and then Jordan, and uh, lastly, uh, the lady that made me the luckiest man on the planet 12 years ago, my wife Amy, if the house will make them feel welcome, please. The gentleman to 17, Doug Lovejoy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, today, if you look to the South Gallery, we've got some friends from home, about 35 members of Local 40 of the United Steelworkers. They're here on behalf of their brothers and sisters, 450 striking steelworkers uh, down in Huntington at Special Metals. They're with their president, Chad Thompson, and my friends, they're on day 119 of a strike. That means Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. They're here today to meet with their lawmakers. I hope you'll make a few minutes to meet with them and show them your support. House, if you guys would stand in the House, please make them feel welcome. Gentlemen, the 48th, Doug Queen. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm joined by a, a good friend to join the fun today and tonight. Uh, Andrew Givens is in the gallery. He's the grandson of former delegate Roy Givens, who served here for 24 years from Brook County. He's being escorted by my girlfriend, Meredith Ward. If they both would stand up in the house, please make them feel welcome. Played in the 41st, Doug Tully. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, friends. If you will join me in welcoming several pages today to the West Virginia Legislature, coming from beautiful Nicholas County, I have the lovely Lauren Conley. She's accompanied by her mother, Lisa Conley. I have Grace Gano, Isaac McKinney, and Madison Gerwig. All of them attend New Life Christian Academy in, in Nicholas County. And then on behalf of Delegate Hannah and myself, we have Bryson Hall, who also attends New Life. Gentleman the 14th, Doug Wamsley. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, please help me give a good Mason County welcome to Felicity Foster, Gunner Foster, and Louisa Foster, part of the Mason County Homeschool System. They're currently studying agriculture and personal finance. And their grandmother, Patricia Knowles, uh, their mother and father, Kevin and Amy Foster, are in the West Gallery. Gentleman to 46, take a Burkhammer. Mr. Speaker, I would like to welcome my mother, Becky, uh, my stepdad, Archie, if you'll stand up, and uh, my son, Cooper, and my daughter, Riley. And uh, if you would, let's make them feel welcome. Gentleman to 27, Doug Smith. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the North Gallery, please show a war warm welcome to my friend and favorite antagonist, Jennifer Oliver from Athens, West Virginia. Thank you. The gentleman to seventh, Doug Barnhart. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Joining us today in the West Gallery from Ritchie County, we have my good friend and our former colleague, Former Delegate Jason Harshbarger, would you please join me in giving him a wild and wonderful West Virginia welcome. <laughs> Gentleman of the 10th, Doug Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning. Today, in the North Gallery, I have a very good friend that, work, that I work with for over 30 years, and if you'd please, please stand, please welcome Mr. Steve Gissy. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and make my friend welcome. Lady number 35th, Doug Young. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, today's Girl Scouts Day in the House of Delegates, and we had a bunch of Girl Scouts in earlier today. They've got a bunch of booths set up over on the Senate side. I see some Girl Scouts up in the West Gallery. If they could stand up and everybody in the House can make them feel welcome. Thank you. Ladies and 52nd, Dr. Saipo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today in the gallery, Delegate Jennings and I are honored to have the family of William Farkas' parents, Jay and Rhonda and his brother from Tunnelton, Preston County. We are honored to have them with us. However, we would have loved to have Jay Farkas himself, and he would have loved to join us today. However, he, could, he cannot join us because upon graduating recently from the uh, Challenge Academy, he has already landed out in Fort Leonardwood, Missouri to start his journey to West Point. However, let's welcome his parents and his brother, and they will also honor us tonight by joining us for the State of the State. Would they please stand and let's give them a warm welcome. Gentleman 16, Doug Mant. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to introduce one of our pages today from the village of Barbersville. If Tinsley Ripley would please stand, and she is accompanied by her parents in the West Gallery, Justin and Ashley. Would the House please make them feel welcome? Okay. 
Lady Man 51st, Dr. Like Fleshauer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm delighted that we have our foster care ombudsman here today. And on behalf of the delegates from the 51st, I'd like to introduce Pamela Woodman Kaler. Um, she is a herself a foster mom many times. Would the House please make her very welcome? Let him in 51st second, Walker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also have a guest in the rear gallery. Shana Gray is West Virginia CASAS Association State Executive Director. Shana, would you please take a stand and will the House please make her welcome? Are there further introductions? Gentleman 53rd, Doug Jennings. House will please be in order. The bad thing when you get old, you get awful emotional. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Zach is coming home. He will be escorted by the state troopers and Marines to Kingwood this evening. <clears throat> Zach Wayne Riffle was an 18-year-old. He enjoyed sports and played football and wrestled while attending Preston High School. The public is invited to welcome home the body of private first class Zachary Zach Wayne Riffle, who passed from a tactical vehicle rollover near Jacksonville, North Carolina. He was a landing support, support specialist with Combat Logistics Battalion 24, Combat Logistics Regiment 2, 2nd Marine Logistics Group. He will be returning home to Kingwood on Thursday, January 27, 2022. The flight will arrive in Pittsburgh at 7.25 p.m., then heading to Kingwood, driving by his parents' home on 329 East Main Street and his grandparents' home on Brown Avenue, then on to Barrier Funeral Home in Newburgh. Family is asking residents to gather at the Buckwheat Festival grounds to honor a fallen soldier. Mr. Speaker, may I ask for a moment of silence? All members and guests in the galleries will please stand as the House observes a moment of silence. Thank you. Members and guests may be seated. Lady from the 49th for an update on the calendar. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. House Bill 2882 on second reading was moved from the special calendar to the House calendar. Report to standing committees. Your Committee on Energy and Manufacturing has had under consideration House Bill 4098 relating to geothermal energy development and reports the same back with amendment with the recommendation that it do pass as amended, but that it first be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. Report to be received. Bill will be referred to the Committee on Judiciary. Your Committee on Energy and Manufacturing has had under consideration House Bill 2493, providing valuation limitations for coal property taxation and clarifying the penalties for non-filers, and reports the same back with amendment with the recommendation that it do pass as amended, but that it first be referred to the Committee on Finance. The report will be received. The bill will be referred to the Committee on Finance. Your Committee on Energy and Manufacturing has had under consideration House Resolution 6, urging the Army Corps of Engineers to support hydroelectric power generation at the Summersville Dam, and reports the same back with the recommendation that it be adopted, but that it first be referred to the Committee on Rules. The report will be received. That resolution will be referred to the Committee on Rules. Your Committee on Energy and Manufacturing has had under consideration House Bill 4243 authorizing the Office of Miners Health Safety and Training to promulgate a legislative rule relating to, government, to governing the safety of those employed in and around surface mines in West Virginia. House Bill 4244 authorizing the Office of Miners Health Safety and Training to promulgate a legislative rule relating to governing first aid training of shaft and slope employees and House Bill 4245, 
authorizing the Office of Minors Health, Safety, and Training to promulgate a legislative rule relating to substance abuse screening standards and procedures and report the same back with the recommendation that they each do pass, but that they first be referred to the Committee on Government Organization. The report will be received. Those three bills will be referred to the Committee on Government Organization. Your Committee on Energy and Manufacturing has had under consideration House Bill 4122, authorizing the Department of Environmental Protection to promulgate a legislative rule relating to requirements for the management of coal combustion residuals. residuals. House Bill 4124, authorizing the Department of Environmental Protection to promulgate a legislative rule relating to underground injection control. And House Bill 4125, authorizing the Department of Environmental Protection to promulgate a legislative rule relating to administrative proceedings and civil penalty assessment, and reports the same back with the recommendation that they each do pass, but that they first be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. That report will be received. Those bills will be referred to the Committee on Judiciary. Your Committee on Political Subdivisions has had under consideration House Bill 2232, providing a process by which a city may hold an election to recall an ordinance and reports the same back with amendment with the recommendation that it do pass as amended, but that it first be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. The report will be received. That bill will be referred to the Committee on Judiciary. Your Committee on Fire Departments and Emergency Medical Services has had under consideration House Bill 4142, authorizing the Fire Commission to promulgate a legislative rule relating to the Fire Code. House Bill 4143, authorizing the Fire Commission to promulgate a legislative rule relating to the State Building Code. House Bill 4144, authorizing the Fire Commission to promulgate a legislative rule relating to volunteer fire department equipment and training grant funding disbursement. House Bill 4145, authorizing the Fire Commission to promulgate a legislative rule relating to specialized membership. House Bill 4146, authorizing the Fire Commission to promulgate a legislative rule relating to junior firefighters. House Bill 4147, authorizing the Fire Commission to promulgate a legislative rule relating to the certification of fire chiefs. House Bill 4148, authorizing the Fire Commission to promulgate a legislative rule relating to use of aqueous film, foaming, film forming foam for fire training per program purposes. And House Bill 4149, authorizing the fire marshal to promulgate a legislative rule relating to regulation of fireworks and related explosive materials and reports the same back with the recommendation that they each do pass but that they first be referred to the Committee on Government Organization. That report will be received. Those bills will be referred to the Committee on Government Organization. Your Committee on Banking and Insurance has had under consideration House Bill 4271 to establish the West Virginia Security for Public Deposits Act and reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass but that it first be referred to the Committee on Finance. That report will be received. The bill will be referred to the Committee on Finance. Your Committee on Banking and Insurance has had under, under consideration House Bill 4326 to modify the five-year waiting period and 100-person minimum for an association health plan and to allow new flexibility granted under federal rules and reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass but that it first be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. The report will be received. The bill will be referred to the Committee on Judiciary. Your Committee on Banking and Insurance has had under consideration House Bill 4295 to transfer the state office of the National Flood Insurance Program from the offices of the Insurance Commissioner to the Division of Emergency Management and reports the same back with amendment with the recommendation that it do pass as amended, but that it first be referred to the Committee on Veterans Affairs and Homeland Security, then government organization. That report will be received. The bill will be referred to the Committee on Veterans Affairs and Homeland Security, then government organization. Your Committee on Banking and Insurance has had under consideration House Bill 4364 to update the law related to money transmitters to align West Virginia with the majority of states with respect to control of a licensee and key individuals as well as net worth and reports the same back with amendment with the recommendation that it do pass as amended but that it first be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. That report will be received and the bill will be referred to the Committee on Judiciary. Your Committee on Agriculture and Natural Resources has had under consideration House Bill 4247, 
authorizing the Division of Natural Resources to promulgate a legislative rule relating to special motor boating regulations and House Bill 4246, authorizing the Division of Natural Resources to promulgate a legislative rule relating to revocation of hunting and fishing licenses and reports the same back with the recommendation that they each do pass but that they first be referred to the Committee on Government Organization. That report will be received. Those bills will be referred to the Committee on Government Organization. Your Committee on Small Business, Entrepreneurship, and Economic Development has had under consideration House Bill 4084 relating to advanced recycling and reports the same back with amendment with the recommendation that it do pass as amended but that it first be referred to the Committee on Energy and Manufacturing. The report will be received. That bill will be referred to the Committee on Energy and Manufacturing. Your Committee on Education has had under consideration House Bill 4008 relating to Higher Education Policy Commission funding formula and House Bill 4289 establishing the Behavioral Health Workforce Education Initiative at the Higher Education Policy Commission and reports the same back with amendment with the recommendation that they each do pass as amended, but that they first be referred to the Committee on Finance. That report will be received. Those bills will be referred to the Committee on Finance. Your Committee on Education has had under consideration House Bill 4110 relating to staffing levels at multi-county vocational centers and reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass. The report will be received. Your Committee on Education has had under consideration House Bill 4360 relating to West Virginia Invest community service requirements and reports back a committee substitute therefore with the recommendation that the committee substitute do pass. That report will be received. Your Committee on the Judiciary has had under consideration House Bill 4312 extending the option of, electric, uh, of electronic absentee ballot transmission to first responders in certain emergency circumstances and Senate Bill 244 relating to appointment of judges to the Intermediate Court of Appeals and reports the same back with the recommendation that they each do pass. That report will be received. Your Committee on Government Organization has had under consideration House Bill 4260 creating the state central legal advertising website and House Bill 4297 to facilitate the sharing of information between the Department of Health and Human Resources and the State Auditor's Office in order to investigate reports of financial abuse and neglect of a vulnerable adult and reports the same back with amendment with the recommendation that they each do pass as amended but that they first be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. That report will be received. Those bills will be referred to the Committee on the Judiciary. Your Committee on Government Organization has had under consideration House Bill 4333 and related to the sunset of the Board of he Hearing Aid Dealers and Fitters and reports back a committee substitute therefore with the recommendation that the committee substitute do pass. That report will be received. Your Committee on Government Organization has had under consideration House Bill 4286 relating to exempting persons employed as attorneys from the civil service system and reports the same back with the recommendation that it do pass. That report will be received. Are there further standing committee reports? Your Committee on Rules has had under consideration House Resolution 5 regarding power grid stability and reports the same back with the recommendation that it be adopted. That report will be received. Your Committee on Rules has had under consideration House Resolution 9 amending the rules of the House of Delegates and reports the same back with the recommendation that it be rejected. That report will be received. Are there further reports to standing committees, reports of select committees, executive messages? Senate messages. The Clerk of the Senate announces that the Senate has passed Senate Bill 1, crea creating mining mutual insurance company. That message will be received, and that bill will be referred to the Committee on Energy and Manufacturing, then the Committee on Finance. The Clerk of the Senate announces that the Senate has concurred in the House effective date to make Senate Bill 191, allowing poll workers to work full and half days, effective from passage. That message will be received. The Clerk of the Senate announces that the Senate has passed the following bills. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 334, authorizing miscellaneous agencies and boards to promulgate rules. That message will be received. That bill will be referred to the Committee on Government Organization. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 417, relating to authorized expenditures of revenues from certain state funds for fire departments. That message will be received. The bill will be referred to the Committee on Finance. 
Senate Bill 427, permitting West Virginia Board of Medicine investigators to carry concealed weapon. That message be received. The bill will be referred to the Committee on Judiciary. Senate Bill 436, correcting code citation for authority of state fire marshal. That message be received. The bill will be referred to the Committee on Government Organization. Are there further Senate messages, resolutions? House Resolution 29, David Allen, oh, House Concurrent Resolution 29, David Allen Drake, Sr. Memorial Bridge. Lady in the 49th. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that the further reading of resolutions introduced be dispensed with and that each resolution be considered as formally introduced and referred to the appropriate committees as indicated on the delegate console system. The lady from the 49th asked unanimous consent that the further reading of resolutions introduced be dispensed with and that each resolution be considered as having been formally introduced and referred to the appropriate committees as shown on the delegate console system. Are there objections? There are no objections, petitions, motions, bills introduced. House Bill 4416, provide volunteer firemen free license plates and vehicle registration. Lady in the 49th. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that the further reading of bills introduced be dispensed with and that each bill be considered as formally introduced and referred to the appropriate committees as indicated on the delegate console system. The lady from the 49th asked unanimous consent that the further reading of bills introduced be dispensed with and that each bill be considered as having been formally introduced and referred to the appropriate committees as shown on the delegate console system. Are there objections? There are no objections. Unfinished business. Bills on third reading. Bills on second reading. House Bill 2562, relating to litter control. Are there amendments? Delegate Capito moves to amend the bill on page 7, section A1, line 5, by deleting the words up to and in lieu thereof, inserting the words less than or equal to, and on page 7, section B1, line 24, by deleting the words up to and in lieu thereof, inserting the words less than or equal to. Question before the House is, shall the amendment be adopted? Gentleman the 35th, Doug Capito. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The amendment before you is somewhat technical, uh, and it changes the language such that uh, if there was littering up to 100 pounds, there would be a certain penalty, and if it was over 100 pounds, it would be a certain penalty, but there would be no penalty for exactly 100 pounds. So we have changed the language to ensure that it is all covered. That's the summarization of the amendment. I urge adoption of it. Question before the House is the adoption of the amendment. Is there a further discussion on the amendment? If not, those in favor of adoption of the amendment will please say aye. Those opposed will please say no. The ayes have it. That amendment is adopted. Are there further amendments? Delegate Kessinger moves to amend the bill on page 2, section 4, line 14, following the word exceeding by striking 50 and inserting in lieu thereof the following, 5. And on page 8, section 4A, line 50, following the word protection by inserting the following, or duly appointed officer from the office, department, or agency wherewith the criminal charge originated. Question before the House is, shall the amendment be adopted? Lady from the 32nd, Doug Kessinger. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So this is a two-part amendment. Um, the purpose of the first portion of the amendment, um, you can find the location on page 2, section 4, line 14. Um, we're going to be striking 50 and instead inserting 5. Um, and the reason is because I feel like 50 pounds of litter is a little bit of excessive. The purpose behind 50 um, was to avoid citations for people flicking cigarette butts and things out of their vehicle, and I totally understand that. However, 50 pounds of aluminum cans, it takes 1,600 empty aluminum cans to equal 50 pounds. It takes 5,000 single sheets of paper to equal 50 pounds. I hate litter. Like, I detest it. There's nothing I hate more than litter. And so the purpose of this portion of the amendment is to say anything over five pounds um, will be a violation, and, and a litter officer um, can come and write a citation. You can be held accountable for that if you're found guilty. Um, again, like at the end of the day, if you have a neighbor who has a party and leaves 700 empty beer cans outside of your house, there's nothing that could be done. And so this reduces it to give our litter control officers a little bit more um, lead way there. Um, the second portion of the amendment is on page 8, section 4A, line 50, um, following the word protection 
Um, it's simply adding that um, not only is DEP a potential inspector of a litter uh, of a litter site, um, but that any officer from the agency where the criminal charge originated can also go and inspect. Because in Raleigh County alone, after talking to my litter control officer, they have around 200 of these cases a year, and so 200 cases times 55 counties every single year. Adding that onto what DEP is doing, the possibility of that over overbearing DEP and clogging up our magistrate courts and not getting people through, cleaning up their litter control, their litter sites, and then um, um, being able to get through the court systems quickly and um, speedily. We just want to say that it can be DEP or it could be the litter control officer or the police, a, a police officer, whichever agency um, the charge was brought from. So thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman the 35th, Edgar Capito. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in uh support of the lady's amendment and uh, appreciate her uh, desire to clean the state up. I agree with her. Hope you will, too, and support the amendment. Is there further discussion on the amendment? If not, the question before the House is, shall the amendment be adopted? Those in favor of adoption of the amendment will please say aye. aye. Those opposed will please say no. I have a chair declares that amendment adopted. Are there further amendments? If not, that bill will be advanced to third reading. Next bill on second reading. House Bill 4024, creating a cosmetology apprentice program that allows companies to train employees for practical real-world experience. Are there amendments? If not, the bill will be advanced. Committee substitute for House Bill 4266, relating to limited liability companies. Lady of the 49th. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move the bill be committed to the Committee on the Judiciary. My understanding is a new penalty was created in the last committee. The question now before the House is the lady's motion that committee substitute for House Bill 4266 be committed to the Committee on the Judiciary. Is there debate on the motion? If not, those in favor of the motion will please say aye. Those opposed will please say no. The ayes have it, Chair, declares that motion adopted. House Bill 4266 will be committed to the Committee on the Judiciary. Next bill on second reading. House Bill 4288, relating to expanding the practice of auricular detox to professions approved by the acupuncturist board. Are there amendments? If not, the bill will be advanced. House Bill 4291, relating to authorizing legislative rules regarding higher education. Are there amendments? If not, the bill will be advanced. House Bill 4301, reforming membership requirements of Huntington Park and Recreation District Board. Lady of the 49th. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to move the bill to third reading with the right to amend. Are there amendments? All right, I'm sorry, are there objections? Four amendments. There are no objections heard. House Bill 4301 will be advanced to third reading with the right to amend. Next bill on second reading. House Bill 4308, authorizing disclosure of juvenile information to Crime Victims Compensation Fund for investigation and award of benefits. Are there amendments? If not, the bill will be advanced. Are there further bills on second reading? If not, bills on first reading. Senate Bill 4, repealing ban on construction of nuclear power plants. The bill will be advanced. House Bill 2631, provide for West Virginia DNR officers to be able to work off duty. The bill will be advanced. House Bill 2817, donated drug repository program. The bill will be advanced. House Bill 4048, West Virginia Keep, Bear and Drive with Arms Act. The bill will be advanced. House Bill 4097, to prohibit non-public funding sources for election administration and related expenses without prior written approval by the State Election Commission. The bill will be advanced. Committee substitute for House Bill 4257, require visitation immediately following a procedure in a health care facility. The bill will be advanced. Committee substitute for House Bill 4263, prohibit the practice of white bagging. The bill will be advanced. House Bill 4299, 
to prohibit the intentional interference with election processes and creating associated criminal penalties. The bill will be advanced. Committee substitute for House Bill 4324 to update collaborative pharmacy practice agreements. The bill will be advanced. Are there further bills on first reading? If not, leaves of absence. Introductions. Introductions. Miscellaneous business. Chairman 66, Doug Espinosa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd ask you to answer consent that the remarks uh, from our colleague from the 53rd uh, be placed in the appendix of the journal. Are there objections? No objections are heard. Be so ordered. Are the miscellaneous business? If not, let him 49th. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move subject to announcements the House recess until 6.45 this evening. The question before the House is the motion that's subject to announcements the House stand in recess until 6.45, Lady of the 49th. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to give people um, fair notice, since we won't be adjourning till this evening, that tomorrow morning we will be coming in at 9 a.m. for session. Gentleman the 10th, Doug Chris. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Finance will continue budget hearings today at 3 p.m. in the Committee Finance Room with the Lottery Commission and the Department of Revenue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chairman, the 30 second, Doug Fast. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Judiciary will not be meeting this afternoon. Chairman, the 15th, Doug Foster. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Government and Organization will host a public hearing on House Bill 2882 tomorrow, January 28th at 10 a.m. or immediately following the House the the house floor session in the house chamber or, or whichever one's later it'll either be 10 a.m or immediately con, con, on the conclusion of the house floor session gentlemen the 40th Doug jeffries thank you mr speaker your committee on health and human resources will not meet today however the republican members will caucus in gov org room at one o'clock June the 10th, Doug Kelly. Your, your Committee on Energy and Manufacturing will meet today at 1 p.m. in the Judiciary Committee Room. The agenda is posted. The gentleman the 54th, Doug Hot. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Prison and Jails meets tomorrow morning, January the 28th at 8 a.m. in the House Judiciary Room. The agenda will be posted. Lady the 52nd, Doug Saipo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Seniors, Children, and Family Issues will meet at 11 on Friday morning in the House Government Organization Committee Room. Please bring your computers in the agenda has been posted. The gentleman the third, Dr. Flew Harding. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Democrats will caucus immediately following session in GovOrg. The gentleman the 36th, Dr. Barrick. Speaker, I, I know tomorrow is the travel day, but I've been getting a lot of questions already about this snowstorm moving in tomorrow. And I just want to give you a quick heads up. We should be looking at snow starting late tonight. Uh, it's not a big event, about one to two inches for most areas, higher elevations, maybe about three or four. But it should not impede your travel. Just be very careful on the way home. Coming back, looks like we should have good conditions, maybe some ice on the roads as it's going to be very cold over the weekend. So I'm just telling you, as usual, to be very careful. I'll have an update tomorrow, but right now it doesn't look like anything that's going to prevent anyone from traveling. Just uh, might slow you down a little bit. Kind of a nuisance storm. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The question before the House is the motion that the House stand in recess until 645. Those in favor of the motion will please say aye. Those opposed, please say no. The ayes have it. The House is in recess until 645 this evening.